Hello people and welcome to my series on the Unix philosophy. Uh, in this series we're going to cover uh, what the Unix philosophy is, how it works, and why it's important. This is part one of the series. Uh, in this part one we're going to look at the definition of the Unix philosophy, we're going to look at a couple different uh, simple programs, and we're going to look at how to compose those programs together. So what is the Unix philosophy? Uh, there are many uh, definitions out there, uh, well-known definitions, but I really like the one by Doug McIlroy, and he broke it down into three basic parts. He said that the Unix philosophy is essentially programs that do one thing well, programs work that work together, and programs that read and write from text streams, because that's a universal interface. So essentially what Doug McIlroy was talking about is writing programs as if they're Lego blocks. Lego blocks have many colors, uh, lengths, sizes, and shapes, but they all adhere to one philosophy of the interface. They can all plug into each other. You can always, no matter what you build, you can always stack another block on top of it because that's how the Legos are designed. And that's how uh, the Unix philosophy lays out the design for programs, that you can have programs that do all sorts of different things, but uh, at the very foundation of the program's design, they should be able to be pluggable. They should be able to be composed together. So let's take a look at a very simple program. This program splits text, um, or this program actually takes text and makes it uppercase. So uh, all the, the heavy lifting of the program is actually just done right here. We have a strings to upper, and we take the text and we make it uppercase. And the whole rest of this program is just designed to control the input. So we can, we can actually read input from the user from standard input, or we can read from one or more different files. So that makes this program read and write text streams. So let's take a look at how this program works in action. So I've already uh, taken this program and compiled it. So we, it's called upper. So if we run upper, we can type things like hello, and it will return it in uppercase. So we can write, this is my string, and it will print it out in uppercase. And it doesn't matter what things are uppercase or lowercase, it will print them out as uppercase. All right, that's very good. So let's try our program Actually, let's take a look. I created beforehand a text file with three lines. It has hello, this is my file. It has lowercase words, one more line. And I created another file called text2 that has a few lines in it. It even has an empty line. So let's take our program upper and feed it a file. So it will read that file and print it out in uppercase. So we can also give it one or more files. So we can uh, give it two files, and it will print both those files at once in uppercase. So it's a very, very simple program. That So this, this program, it does one thing, and it does it well. It, it reads in, in text input and outputs uppercase. And notice that we'll never have versioning problems with this program. If we figure out a more efficient way to make text uppercase, or if there's perhaps a slight bug, we can fix it and release it, and other people can use our program and not have to worry about the interface breaking or the API breaking. So all this headache that happens in the NPM, uh, the Node Package Manager, or any kind of package management systems or version management um, can be eliminated by using the uh, the Unix philosophy by making our the, th the programs that we write composable and doing just one thing by not having any special configurations or tuning or flags or anything like that we, we allow our API to be extremely simple 
and always work even when we release new versions of our code. Another thing that is very powerful is that any program written in any language can use our program. There's no need for a foreign function interface or a wrapper library that's needed. Uh, we can just, from any other program in Python or C Sharp or C++, we can call our program and uh, give it a text stream and read its output. So that's very powerful. Let's take a look at one more program. This program is nearly identical to our previous program, except instead of making uppercase strings, we split strings on a space. So we read in lines and we just break, break a uh, file or stream from the user into words. And our main function does the exact same thing as our other main function does. It, it allows us to read from standard in or read from multiple files. So let's take a look at this program. So this program is called uh, split stream. And if we run it, we can say this is my stream. And it will split it into one word per line. And we can feed it a file like text. And it will split it into uh, words. We can also feed it text to. And it will split two files into words. So once again, this is a, uh, a program that does one thing well. And it and it uh, it reads from text streams. So another powerful part of the uh, Unix philosophy is having composable programs. In the old days of Unix, uh, there you had many of these simple programs like ls, which lists uh, your directory files and directories, or cat, which uh, echoes out the contents of a program. You have many of these simple programs and you could use them to do useful work. But sometimes you'd wa want to do something more complicated. And with the shell, which is what we're using right here, so ls get, lists our files and things like that. Uh, so with the shell, you could actually combine commands together to create new programs that were useful to you. So we could do something like this. We could create a file that combines upper and split stream, and we could call it upper split. And it's just a shell file. And so then once we have this program, we can combine, uh, we can output our text stream and pipe it to our new program, and it would perform its operation. So that's, that's how, um, that's how actually users interacted with their computer, with the Unix computer, uh, in the old days, right? So you could, uh, so the user themselves could actually write new programs based on these building blocks, kind of like Legos of other programs. So let's take a look at that. We can do we can do upper, uh, or actually let's 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 cat. So if we do cat. It will cat just prints out text of a file. So if we cat text and pipe it to upper, it will print out our file in uppercase. And if we pipe that to split string, then it will print out our file uppercase and split it into words. So uh, we can take that and create a uh, split stream. Uh, let's see, what is it called? A. Let's see, I already created a program. So upper split, that's what it was called. So I created this program called upper split, which just takes our two. Uh, programs and combines them together into one. So instead of having to write out that combination every single time, we can just go cat text the file that we want, or maybe even more files that we want, and pipe that to upper split. And it will 
perform that action for us, which is a very powerful thing. We wrote our, pro our two separate programs and we can just combine them together into one. And so that is the end of our first part. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, next time we'll actually go over, uh, we'll go over the power of the of this approach by looking at um, by looking at the costs of writing programs in using the Unix philosophy versus writing monolithic programs. Thank you for watching. Till next time.